Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for coming to hear what is one of our first new types of sessions called Futures One. So this has been brought about to help people evaluate different types of careers, and we've had other sessions in the past talking about careers out of academia, and the focus of this particular one is to look at different types of careers for postdoctoral scientists as they go through and progress in an academic job. So I'm very pleased to see this type of session in the BES, and we hope that you'll enjoy it. So I'll, I'm Ruth Andrew from Edinburgh, and this is Sam Merzuk from London, who's going to be chairing, co-chairing with me this morning, and I'll hand over to Sam. Thank you very much, Ruth. Our first speaker is Susan Bird, who's going to give us a talk entitled Insights into Career Patterns for Graduates of a Biological with a Biological Sciences Degree. Well, good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as, as my colleague mentioned, I'm Susan Bird. I actually am a careers consultant at the University of Edinburgh Career Service, and I've been asked today to give a brief insight into career pattern for biological science students. What I thought I would do is very briefly give you an insight into some of the skills gained through studying biological sciences, because it does make an impact on what some of our graduates subsequently go on to do and the pathways that they follow. I'm going to give you a brief flavour of what nationally, what UK-wide, what some biological sciences graduates go on to do. It's very much a snapshot, and I'll explain that in a moment in terms of when we gather that data. I thought it would be interesting to give you a perspective on what University of Edinburgh biological um, science graduates go on to do, and how you can find out longer term what some of those progressions, what some of those career paths can be. And because it's fairly short today, I'll finish up with signposting where you can find out more. In terms of undergraduate level, our biological sciences graduates develop a wealth, a range of skills and experiences, both subject specific knowledge and much broader, um, that sort of wider skill set that allows you to progress both as scientists, but also in terms of other things you may be interested in doing. In terms of the skills developed from a biological science degree, um, there's lots of uh, different careers that are based on the sort of key STEM skill set, STEM standing for science, technology, engineering and maths. And in terms of our biological scientists, they're valued for, as well as the subject-specific knowledge, that broad, transferable, analytical, scientific, problem-solving head that our biological scientists tend to have. Um, it might surprise you to know that in terms of vacancies that are advertised, at least 40% of vacancies don't specify a specific degree discipline. Or if they do, it might be any scientific or any analytical degree discipline. And that is a reflection of that skill set that our scientists are developing through their specific degree. Can I ask if there's any PhD students in the audience? Yeah, quite a few. At a higher level, you might be interested if you haven't found this already on the VTI website, vti.ac.uk's particularly useful career development section, and it includes its researcher development framework, which again, it picks up the skill set that you're developing as PhD researchers to a much higher level and helps you break it down into different component parts to help you see exactly what you are developing as a researcher. Sometimes our researchers are so busy doing the work and so close to it, it's sometimes difficult to take a step, step back and actually say, okay, on a very specific detail-based level, what am I developing as a result of my PhD that can then link to different career paths, link to different career progressions, and help me to see myself in different futures, in different places. This is particularly useful if you are doing a doctorate or if you're an uh, early stage career researcher. If you are very keen to pursue an academic career, it will help you to align um, the things required for those areas with your own experience. But if you're are also thinking, how might I apply that skills and experience in different areas? This really helps to make you connect with those different requirements. The latest figures we have on a national basis are from people who graduated in 2014. The 2015 one will be coming out shortly. But I wanted to give you nationally a picture of what our biology sciences graduates are doing. So you see there's quite a significant number are actually in further study. It's a, a much higher percentage than the, um, the national average for other subjects, which is around about 12, 15%. 
And that's a reflection of our biology science students' interest in their subject, uh, that they want to take it to a higher level, um, that a desire for, to study to a higher level, whether it's to move into a PhD or as a specific requirement. Every year, a number of our students decide that they want to do medicine as a second degree sometimes as graduate entry courses. Um, so that, I think, is then reflected in the fact that a lot go on to do further study. For some, it's competition. So whether it's a competition for a place on the clinical science training program that does require a certain level of experience, that experience can be gained through doing a master's, through doing a PhD. And for some students, it may be that they're actually unsure of career direction. And it may be a case of, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'll just do some more study. Um, and that's partly where the career service can come in, in terms of you know, engaging with our students really early on to help explore different areas. At the bottom of that slide, you'll see an indication of some of the courses that our graduates um, nation nationally go on to do. So you can see quite broad, the, broad there, including secondary education, as well as very specific areas of science. For those who are working, this slide can look a little scary. As you see, there's a large number that are looking at retail, catering, waiting and bar staff, which isn't ideally the section, sector we'd necessarily want our science graduates to be in. But there's, that's just a little bit of the picture. We don't know the full story for that, but actually some students may be taking time after graduation to apply for higher level positions. They may have focused on getting the best possible mark that they can get up until graduation and then need a bit of time beyond that to think, what am I going to do next? Can I save up some more money to do further study? Um, can I save up, maybe do a bit of travelling? So six months on, we don't know why they are necessarily doing those roles. There could be some other reasons. It may be that they need to build up some experience if they haven't had the opportunity to do that during the degree. And again, for some, it may be an uncertainty, uncertainty about options. They've maybe not been particularly active in exploring during their um, degree or career planning during their studies, so they're having to do it beyond. And again, this is where we would really encourage early engagement um, with our students. I tend to work with students from first year onwards. In fact, even early, I work with students at university open days to start exploring why they're thinking about choosing the subjects that they are. For those who are working six months on, many are working in non-biology related roles. And again, a flavour of those, silver service, transport planning, business analysis in the oil and gas and finance sector. And it just shows you that it's a reflection of the skill set they're developing, those transferable skills that you get. But also the recruitment market, particularly in the UK, that values um, students from other disciplines in terms of what it brings to their organisation. But I also feel it reflects the range of interests, motivations and experiences that our students have. And you'll see at the bottom there a few flavours on a national um, basis in terms of some of the areas of work that our students have gone into, from biomedical science to research science, but also scientific officer in terms of banknote printing. In that case, it was looking at security, analysing um, the, um, the, what you call them, the little logos on, on banknotes that, that prevent those banknotes from being um, counterfeited. I did a little bit of background research in terms of the destinations of our students at University of Edinburgh, and this is six months after graduation. We do a, a survey. It's a, a requirement by government to contact our graduates six months after they finish at undergraduate and at postgraduate level. Um, and these are some of the areas that our students went into. Broadly speaking, right across pharma, agriculture, food manufacturing. McPhee of Glen Bervie is a large food manufacturing organisation, but also biotech, infection control, publishing and teaching. And you see actually a few of the organisations, in fact at least two of the organisations that are up on that screen are um, part of the exhibition downstairs in the basement. So if any of you want to talk to them after today, I'm sure they'd be very happy to talk to you about that. For those of you who are studying PhDs, there is a more longitudinal study that has been undertaken. It was three and a half years after graduating with a PhD. And again, this information is available on the VTI website. What do researchers do? They're particularly good at gathering information for PhD graduates. And you'll see across um, different sectors, split between still working in HE and working with non-HE, 
a large number of people still working in a research-related role that may not necessarily be in a higher education institution, but it's, um, they're still applying their research, applying their research skills. Um, and in a range of areas, again, anything from central and local government to pharmaceutical, chem chemical manufacturing and the health service. Again, I just wanted to give you a flavour with those job titles, the potential, the range of, of things that our PhD graduates can on, go on to do. Um, at the University of Edinburgh, some went into medical writing, policy advisory roles, scientific publishing and forensic consultancy. It is good, I think, the initial title of this was career progression. And sometimes to get that sense of story, that more longitudinal view, increasingly that we're using LinkedIn to be able to do that. And I just put a couple of profiles up on here that I wanted to show you. In terms of two of Edinburgh University's graduates, Carmel did a PhD at Edinburgh, where Jacob did a BSc in Developmental Biology. And by look, using the EDU, the LinkedIn EDU facility, you are able to track graduates from different universities over a long period of time in terms of where they started, what they've done along the way, and where they are now. It can be really useful in terms of giving you some inspiration of what could be possible, but also getting a sense of where those students have gone on to work. And not all of these places may necessarily advertise very actively on university websites or in um, targetjobs.com, for example, but it does give you a little bit more idea about where your experiences and scientific and transferable skill sets can lend themselves to working. And sometimes it's not a linear career path. People go sideways and then progress. Um, even, again, talking to some of the people downstairs, there's biomedical graduates, there are biochemistry graduates working downstairs, nursing graduates, whose career paths have taken them sometimes into research and development, then back out into marketing, into sales, into um, connecting with GPs, connecting with NH Trust to be able to talk to them about the medicines and the products they are um, developing and selling. So actually some of those biomedical, biological science graduates there are illustrations of people downstairs whose career path progression hasn't been linear. It's been a little bit more crazy paving, if you like. And Jacob um, started doing his developmental biology degree here, and you see he's now working for Nova Nordics, who are downstairs as well. So as well as this giving you a little bit of inspiration, it's good for networking as well. But I think in terms of understanding where your biological sciences degree can take you, the LinkedIn Edu is a really useful resource and something I would encourage you to use. It's very brief today, but some of the resources that I've mentioned, you can for, for follow up on today include the prospects.ac.uk website. If you're at an undergraduate stage and you're trying to work out what could I do with my degree, what am I developing as a result? The Vitae and LinkedIn ones I've mentioned. And finally, if you do like to follow up on, on anything, the Royal Society of Biology has a particularly good careers section there. Thank you very much. Thank you.